normally a, yes you should be getting a sign of that okay perfect so um welcome daniel and welcome thais uh, it's amazing to have you both here um we had a, had a conversation a couple of months ago i was lucky uh, to visit you daniel in in, in your home um and, and and we had a conversation about the connection to make a connection between Sinal de Valle and yourself, as you had heard from each other's work. And, and I know that Thais is a big, big fan of your work, the way you articulate the vision, uh, in your visions in general, uh, not only the book that you wrote, but in general, uh, really resonates. I know that Thais has told me it's one of the persons when he writes something or says something, I always agree. <laughs> and we know that Thais doesn't always agree with everyone. So that's a, it's meant as a compliment. Let's read it that way. So, um, and at the same time, we have Thais here, right, who is a, um, a pioneer, we would say, and, 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 and you know, with Sinaldo Valle has built, not only with Sinaldo Valle, also things before that, but has built a, a true example of a, um, a bio hub or a, a, a location, a place-based uh, initiative that is trying to and helping to find ways to regenerate uh, nature and, and, and communities. And of course, given, um, given your book, um, you know, designing regenerative cultures is so interwoven with this with this uh, subject. And since then, because the book is twenty sixteen, I think, right, uh, Daniel? Yeah. So since then, of course, a lot of different different work already done from your side. We thought it was a great idea to bring you both together um, within the context of dialogues on the bioeconomy uh, for the Rio G twenty. So Thais is is as part of the. Uh, it's co-chair of the U UN decade for ecosystem restoration and also of the World Future Forum. And in that capacity, um, with the G20 happening in Rio, she has the, uh, uh, or we have identified the opportunity to influence the narrative and the conversations that should be happening on the G20. Brazil is bringing bioeconomy in as the Sherpa track uh, on the G20. And so the vision that, that, um, that we want to bring to that is that vision of how bio hubs or bio centers can be catalysts to create uh, a bio economy at the scale of a bio region. Right? So that is sort of the starting point. But one of the enabling conditions if, of that is the leadership capability. And this is exactly why we want to have this conversation and this interview with yourself as one of the main voices in regeneration. Um, not and from a practical sense, but also from a thought leadership sense. Uh, so that's what the topic of this interview will be about, if that's good for both of you. Yeah, that was a very long introduction without having you say something. <laughs> so, thanks, thanks for the invitation. Yes, all right. So uh, maybe to kick off the conversation, a, a little bit broader uh, question to both of you um, on what do you believe is needed now from a leadership perspective to manage us through disruption and uncertainty which is all around us of course so what do you feel is needed from that sense and maybe you yes, Thais, do you want to okay daniel yeah. you, you start <laughs> daniel start um i think we need to to some extent question the whole package of ideas that comes with the notion of leadership um, with regard to notions like agency and change maker and um, let's design a better solution, implement it, and then everything will be fine. Um, of course, we need all that. But we're now in such a complex, interconnected world, having left it so long to respond to the cascading collapses of our own making, that the major agency of change is now in the system itself, not in any individual or a group. Mm -hmm. And we are more likely to have to live through decades of responsiveness and adaptability and resilience in the face of changes that we cannot influence anymore and that needs a different kind of leadership um, that is more in the circle, that is more um, in the qualities of human relationships and the qualities of relationship to place 
um, in the kind of shared history of a group of people to be able to disagree and still move forward together, which is something that is very rare at this point in human history. And, and that's one of the reasons why we need this re-regionalization and, and paying attention to the bioregional uh, context, because at that scale is where resilience and survival will happen in the future. Mm -hmm. And at that scale, we better now build the um, infrastructure for the capability to respond to these changes. So it, there's a there's a real not a oh wouldn't it be a good idea if we did that? But it's to my mind more um, how can we facilitate to wake up that that's our best chance of survival? Yes, uh, great. And so basically, you're saying that the reframing of leadership, if I understand you correctly, is not the oh you need some leaders to decide some things and they will come up with new solutions for what we need to do, but it's building the capacity within people to build relationships that create resilient communities or that create resilient yeah, communities to problem solve what's there as we build, as we go through it, like adapting and being more resilient, right? Is that, is that a... Oh, what that, you mean? I believe that that's what we need in every bioregion on the planet. Um, but of course, at the same time, we need um, political and industrial leadership at this point in time to even dare to call out the state of the planet to the point of saying that there is no option of just window dressing the current system into um, a less impactful uh, state. We, we actually need to, once we accept that we need a fundamental transformation of the human presence on earth um, and we get political leaders to speak to this necessity uh, then then we need that enabling local leadership so it's it's a paradox that on the one hand we need these strong individual leaders to shift the policies in that direction but then at the regional level i think the leadership needs to be in the group itself it's, it needs to be much more facilitation of a conversation um, of people in the region of how do we prepare for that and, and what do we need yeah. to be enabled to do that. Great. Thais, when you hear that from Daniel, and obviously the same question goes to you, what do you think um, you know, is needed to lead to disruption and certain what comes up for you and what do you maybe want to add or com or? Completely. Yes, I, 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 as usually, I, I fully agree with, uh, with Daniel. I think, uh, I think it's much more on the, on the process of facilitating this adapt adaptability, you know, because it's a transition, uh, of, um, of mindset that we have to do, and many will have to lose, others will have to let go their expectations of, of change because uh, as we go across levels, you no, know, this, this capitalist uh, consumerist society has created like a reference for, for, for everyone you know, of what is a good life, how I play, how I, I, I place myself as an individual and how I, I am seen as such, you know, I mean, this is all the, the, the way how we have uh, um, mo model ourselves, no? So that transition is something difficult because there is a lot of uh, resentment as well, no? I mean, for the ones that have never, will never get there, you know? I mean, they, they, they expect it, but they will never get there. And the ones that we have to let go of things that they considered as, 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 as gain forever, no? And I see this so much, uh, I mean, in Europe, uh, in places where people really imagine that some kinds of comforts of, of tranquility they would have forever, you know, in their jobs and in their places in society. So I agree that is this adaptability. But my, my question is always, what will make it not to be just a, a bitter like a remedy that we'll have to take you know that will have to be more local or we have to take more care about our own needs and you kind of find uh, the, the 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 source uh, 
that can 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 help us move into that direction with evol in, in as part of our evolution. No, and when I when I think of my 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 own uh, journey, no, here at Sinal, I I always when people ask me, I really feel that I uh, little by little I I feel that my journey was of purification. This is probably the word that, that I that I uh, that I think is more more precisely uh, um, defines what I feel. And when I see purification, is that we really go to the essence, and the essence is that. Uh, we are loving beings and we like to be in connection and uh, all these things were in the middle on you know, our needs what i have to do or what how i have to be seen on how do i what do i have to own you know to be accepted and i think when uh, that adaptability it has also a very interesting aspect of uh, which is going to the essence uh, in being more free. You know, there is an aspect of freedom that I think is very important also to be highlighted in this process. No, it's not all bad. There is also an aspect that is very valuable and uh, I can't find another word but freedom, no? Yeah, freedom and you also mentioned love, right? Loving beings. And I yeah. saw, Daniel, that you really, that resonated uh, visibly with you. So I don't know if you want to, Complement what came up for you then? For me, freedom is a human concept to some extent, but love is a biological force in the sense that it is actually the fundamental way that life is organized. Be, through mutual attraction to each other, through what Erich Fromm called biophilia. Um, in my 2006 PhD, I had a subchapter that was entitled Loving Life Enough to Save It, Bioregional Sensitivity and a Cosmopolitan Bioregionalism. It was an academic thesis, so it had to have fancy titles. <laughs> <laughs> but... but what I explored in that, what I still absolutely believe in, what I also could have answered as what is needed in leadership right now is to make people fall in love with place again, to make people fall in love with their community again, to stop trying to solve global problems in global conferences um, in the abstract and then be surprised that the solutions we design in these conferences don't fit into the specifics of a loving, living community in place. Mm -hmm. But if you flip it around and you suddenly look at how all these so-called global problems or meta crisis or whatever you want to call it shows up in the specificity of one place in the valley that Thais is working in or on the island that I live on, then suddenly everything like is still there. The, the issues are still there, but they have a face and a name. They have an ecological and biogeophysical context. They have a historical context and they have real people involved in it and real ecosystems. And then suddenly out of all these different so-called problems, you can see potential. You can see a uniqueness that is given through that uniqueness of place. And, and then it's no longer about how do we save the world, but it's about how do we collectively save this place and in doing so, do our part to save the world. And how do we enable people everywhere to do the same in their regions? And, and ultimately, I think it is through making people fall in love again with the uniqueness, not we, we've created a cultural conversation that is all about abstraction. Mm -hmm. And so we can't see the tree anymore that stands in front of us because we have a label that says oak. And then, oh, yeah, it's an oak. In that moment, you don't see the specific oak anymore. You just see the category. And, exactly. and we, we do that with everything. And so how do we learn again to fall in love with the specificity? And that's by knowing deeply about it and by actually seeing it in the specific, in specific and not in the abstract. And so for me, love is at the center of that. Mm. Yeah, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and in that sense, uh, when I mentioned freedom, because uh, I mean, I, I, I see 
and even when people come at Sinal many times, you know, I mean, uh, they, they, this technical and so all these this 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 these frames, no, this framing that people have uh, have found to to somehow also to value themselves, no, to value what they do or how they they how many times their love is manifested, no. So when I talk about freedom, is really to free us from there because, as you say, it doesn't matter if. It, of course, it's important that you know the categories, but the first thing is that connection. You no, know, is to reestablish to re that uh, that uh, that uh, that sense. You know that uh, that capacity of feeling things at the moment uh, and uh, and be nurtured by that uh, as as you exchange uh, that energy. You know that frequency, and uh, and that's what uh, what. Uh, what is love to some way is to exchange something that at the same time uh, is is common. No, you are in a common field of nurturing, and uh, and I think yeah. this is 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 what we have lost to some extent, and can only be reconnected if we are uh, in nature and you can live uh, 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 that experience. You know. Yeah, yeah, and, and actually that that for me builds on to a, another or an evolution of the question that we were already addressing and actually uh, I think on some of your answers um, because you both are very active in your local community uh, so of course that is you for many years already in Sinal building up and 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 Daniel now you with with moving to Mallorca where you are and, and where you are very conscious about and because we had that conversation where you say, I don't want to only be a person who writes, you know, a book about something, but actually, you know, I also actually want to make that difference in my in a local community and and, and you choose Mallorca to do that now. Um, so I would say as maybe leaders in your or at least people with the consciousness in your community, uh, because everyone is a leader, of course. Um, but so how, how do you try or what do you think is really needed? To, to really create that place-based um, connection and love. So on, not only the love with nature, but also those collaborations in the community. Because Daniel, you, you referenced, hey, to do it really in the community, that's where it becomes tangible. I totally can understand that. And still, you then need leaders that can activate that community, create the awareness, etc. So So what would you both say that from your experience and how you're doing this today, are the core things that as conscious leaders you want to uh, bring into that community to get to that place? Thais, do you want to start with that? Well, I think I think it's, it's, again, I mean, I think it's so important to, to release people from... Uh, from the these expectations and from a volume what we already have you know because the question the i think one of the big crises of our times is also people call colonization but i think it's is is i don't like to use the that word so much but it really is what happens because we kind of you cannot see what we have or what is around us and you are always looking beyond or searching for other things or or willing things that we don't have and i see it's so part of the experience even when people arrive in scenarios in that process of uh, of, uh, of of reconnecting of uh, of uh, really also knowing where who you are and what you want and or what, what really makes you 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 fulfilled you know you 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 i think it's uh it's a uh, it's a process that uh that that is needed and uh and uh, that's why i think the biohubs is these learning centers are so important because it's like uh, to be in a school it's like a healing process that people have to go through to reconnect it with themselves so they 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 can reconnect it to things that are really really bring something valuable to them no so i i think uh, i think it's um, and this doesn't happen in 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 places where where the the energy that surround us I'm sorry the cat okay. uh, the energy that that, that surround uh, surrounds you is not uh, a 
um, full of that, you know. I think uh, that uh, that as soon as people get here, it's so interesting, you know, because as soon as people get here, they immediately have a sense of relaxation, no matter what they are. And this is the container, is the nature, but it's also the intention. You no, know? I think uh, these places have to be to have an intention to 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 help all of us to do that uh, that. Uh, that transition no? to, to a lower mm. level, to another level of connection with ourselves, first of all, you know, because when you are really connected, as we are part of the whole, when you are connected to, to, to ourselves immediately, you start feeling things in another way. Yeah, that that's definitely resonates. And I can speak of experience, obviously, by having volunteered in Sinal, right? That that is what, what, what happens there. So you're basically saying it's as leaders then or, you know, create the conditions and intentions for people to be able to reconnect with nature, with themselves, to then, you know, connect and realize they're part of the system that they can um, help change, right? And, and, and the healing part, I think, is also an important one that, that, you, that you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I think if I may add something, I think that more than programs, you know, of environmental education, of this and that, I think people need space, you know, space to feel, to reconnect, and to be somehow supported, you know, and hold in a different way, you know. So it's kind of being home, you know, being at home. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I I had I was lucky to participate of the women's movement, you know, that changed the 20th, 20th century, you know. And uh, and uh, there was nothing. There were not programs. There were these kitchen tables and uh, and uh, sometimes cake, uh, cake, cake and, uh, and, uh, and tea. And the warmth of intimacy that I think is what is also lacking everywhere, no? Yes, beautiful. Daniel, what, what comes up for you when you hear that? or And, and how do you uh, create conditions to, to make progress um, in your work? The answer is initially going to sound terribly theoretical. But I'm doing that on purpose because I actually don't believe in this false dichotomy between theory and practice. Mm -hmm. Um, One of my great mentors was Professor Brian Goodwin, who was one of the co-founders of the whole field of complexity science. And a core insight of complexity science is that basically anything that has more than three interacting variables is a complex dynamic system. Complex dynamic systems don't follow linear cause and effect relationships. They have nonlinear mathematics underlying them where the result becomes the input of the next cycle. And therefore, they're fundamentally unpredictable and uncontrollable. And the best we could ever do is participate appropriately in them. So... Lots of people talk about emergence in complex dynamic systems. That term only refers to the properties of the whole that are, that are more than the sum of its of its parts. That it's precisely the surprising, non non predictable things that we observe in the contexts we live in. So I asked Brian at one point twenty years ago, "How do you?" participate appropriately how do you participate in a way that if you don't know whether your your proposition the way you interact with the system will actually have a positive impact how do you make sure that it's more likely to have a positive impact how how do you make sure that whatever you do leads to positive not to negative emergence Mm -hmm. and what he said is and this is where i think it gets imminently practical you pay attention to the quality of the information that flows in the system You pay attention to the quality of the relationships in the system and you pay attention to the capacity of the system to see itself as a system. The first thing we're talking about here is why a bioregional context? It's the context that allows us to draw a connective boundary, not a separating boundary, that says this is our context and this is the system that we now try to help to see itself. Mm -hmm. 
because most people in a region don't really see themselves as citizens of their region. They've been taught that they're citizens of countries and maybe feel like citizens of the world. Um, or very, very locally, they just feel like members of their local community and nothing else. So even the context of reigniting that bioregional sensitivity, that awareness that we're all in this together and the, the container we're in it together is not just our local community. It's a nested container, our local community, the bioregion and the planet. And so now I come to the what I think is is is, is useful and practical and how I um try to work myself in a very subtle way, not with big programs, is how do I bring people into and exactly what Thais was speaking about? Um warm-hearted contexts in which they aren't going through an environmental education program or taught what to do, but much more saying all of you are already holding awareness of this context, the bioregion, but none of us is holding all the context we're individual holding together. So we are basically needing to put the pieces of the puzzle together or we need to which is what i repeat ad nauseum in my book live the questions together which is even better is to just simply say none of us know this region as deeply as we should so let's go on a journey to really understand our dependencies really understand our potential for a bioeconomy to liberate us from those dependencies and to understand that the freedom that Thais was talking about is a freedom that is a freedom from these larger systems that have made us very dependent on the global industrial mm -hmm. growth society. And, but it's a freedom that is a freedom of responsibility, which is the freedom of true participation in context. And it doesn't come with like that for many people, freedom has this notion of I can do whatever I want. But when you do it together in a context, you begin to realize if what I do is guided by serving the larger context that I'm embedded in, that is the way that I can best serve myself. And you, be, you, you begin to understand that what we all need to do is to understand our context better so we can serve it better. And ultimately, that would serve us better. And all of this, again, sounds contextual, but if you go uh, conceptual, but you, there are 101 ways to actually do this. And it is sitting around a bit of tea and cake and talking about these things. And it predominantly is bring, bringing the people who are already doing something positive within the bioregional context into a relationship with each other. To, to not pretend that there's a project that needs to be designed and then implemented, but to understand that regeneration is happening everywhere in every community. And what you actually need to do is to make it visible and make the different manifestation of life's regenerative impulse visible to itself. And the, yeah, the 101 ways of doing that through culture, community events, um, business meetings, the university, the schools, everything. Yeah, and, and, and what comes up for me as, as you say that, that's for me also a little bit a bridge between your two answers is it's also by really creating that environment of shared learning. No, it sounds like based on what you say, like leaving the questions or leaving the questions together. You mentioned things like earlier facilitation, but bring, um, bring people together, make them see that they're part of the system. So it feels like what both of you are saying, a lot of it is, is in, in being very aware of every opportunity you have to create a condition. So it's a facilitation, feels like as a, as a skill, but facilitative, inquisitive, but also leveraging the moment and bringing the people really together, right? So, so to, to, for me, one of the things I've seen Thais do very often is be really conscious of who you need to bring together in order to have those conversations, right? So, mm -hmm. so I guess there's also an element of, of how, how, how do you, yeah, how do you bring the right people around the table, right? And at the same time, I guess whoever's there is right. He's supposed to be there. So it's also about being very, very inclusive. 
Um, but yeah, very, very uh, insightful, both, both views. Um, in terms mm -hmm. of if we shift a bit more towards specifically trying to create a bioeconomy within a bioregion to make it maybe a little bit more tangible. Until now, we've been more about, you know, capacity of, of, of mm -hmm. a more, more generic space. If we think of things to help create a bioeconomy, is there any other things other than what's already been said that maybe you believe is needed from a from a capability that we need to build to your point maybe it's not just leadership but in general like in, in order to build a bioeconomy what type of things do we need to put more focus on from a leadership perspective okay. I can, I, yeah, do, do, do you want to go daniel huh yeah. you want to go I, I can, but you can also. <laughs> Please go no, ahead. No, no, why don't you start? Go ahead. Mm. Well, I think it's really important in all these conversations to be aware that when we use a certain term, it brings up certain ideas for people, and those ideas might be quite different depending on who's listening. Yes. And I find the term bioeconomy is is probably one of the most loaded terms in that aspect. And therefore, it's also a term that could very, very easily be supported for a while and then undermined by a Horizon One status quo large business approach that includes um, the big pharmaceutical companies and genetic engineering and um, the painting in green of the, the petrochemical mm -hmm. companies. So to really say, what does a bioeconomy look like? Um, like what, what are the, what is the natural bioproductivity of this place? And what are the things that can in a ecologically sensible, sensible way be grown here to create not just enough food for everybody who lives here in that bioregion, but also to create feedstock for a true biomaterials economy, meaning regeneratively grown cellulose and basically the core elements of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen, which are the things that you can cycle freely regionally. Um, mm -hmm. And clearly to get to that, to actually get to a full regional regenerative biomaterials economy, we need enabling technologies that are currently still based on that other economy that will need global collaboration, it will need mining, it will need technology that isn't necessarily produced in that bioregion. So it's a very nuanced conversation around what are the platform technologies that we need to enable globally to then create a predominantly regional bioeconomy. And to, from the start, in the design of these bioeconomies or in the enabling of these bioeconomies, be very, very careful to not jump in with one shot ser serves all, uh, like one bullet serves all solutions. Yeah. Because one of the core things that I, and I have done bioeconomy experiments here on Mallorca with Ecover and, 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 and bigger companies trying to create the feedstocks for one particular industry, which is the, um, the, the detergent and, and cleaning products industry because there are a lot of hotels here on this island. Um, and the idea was, can we create regional products um, from regional waste streams? And what really became evident through actually living the questions in place and just trying it, um, not with the intention of ever maybe rolling it out, but seeing what we could learn in doing so, what became really clear very soon is that if we do living systems design and we mimic the way ecosystems cascade resources through different trophic levels it's really important when you build such a bioeconomy that you don't um promote like wood chip for biomass burning as a 
green energy source because then you jump from a very high product all the way to the bottom of the cascade in one go. It's it's a very complex developing not just of innovative industries but of entire clusters of innovative local industries. So it's a massive opportunity for diversifying local economies, mm -hmm. but there's also a massive need for place-specific research. And then this very nuanced understanding of what are the technologies we need to bring in and how would we provide for them more locally in the future. It's, it's a long-term process of import substitution and local community resilience basis building and and another big caveat in, in all of this is watching out that there will be in this cascade a competition for access to space with regard mm -hmm. to where we grow our food and where we grow our bio biomaterials. And, and these things have gone wrong in, in the past when, when the big boom into biofuels happens. They're actually still going wrong. Like in many countries, like in Germany now, everybody's growing stuff for energy. Uh, uh, depleting the soils just to grow so 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 called green fuels, um, also not truly. Yeah, about no, it. absolutely. I, I love how you how you started by, and this is my um, um, reflection on 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 your beginning of your answer. Is the first thing that needs to happen is a very clear, not just definition, but a clear articulation of bioeconomy as a term so that it's not used and put on everything mm -hmm. but what are the conditions for a bioeconomy to be truly regenerative and to be truly um, um, sustainable and 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 um, so and and within that um, you know there is there won't be a one solution for all uh, so I'm not going to repeat your whole answer in what I what I can now top of my mind remember but I, I think it's a very fair point to say, as, as leaders or as influencers in this process, it's really about making sure that there's a, a, a clear and, and holistic definition that truly serves versus a short-term fix that indeed can then, can then go wrong. And within that, the multiple layers you explained um, very eloquently show that it's not a it's not going to be, oh, this is by economy and now you can do that everywhere in the same way. It's, it's going to be very place specific by definition because it's the it's a bioeconomy. Thais, when when you again just building on that 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 answer from Daniel and, and from your view, what would you uh add or or complement to that? I think uh, I, I I I fully agree. I need I think you need uh, in order to really establish a bioeconomy you need uh, multiple forces to converge, you know, it's not just uh, one intention that will be uh, the, the pulling this in that direction, because we went so far in the other direction, and it's not, uh, it's not easy to fulfill the basic needs of a, of a population, no, just, uh, just thinking that we can draw from local and uh, but what I what I feel, you know, is is in, in this is a bit the work of Sinal in our small capacity, you know, in our in our humble capacity is kind of uh, uh, connect people to that possibility, you know, of of thinking about their lives more in a local economy, you know, instead of going far away or going like a, of thinking that what they do is is very remote from where they are. And I think this, this, and what I see, especially today, that there is much more opening for that than it was before. I mean, especially in our case, because there are, there are questions of traffic, there is questions of time, there is questions also of a burden of work. And so little by little, even if we don't have uh, that shift from, from the industry or from the big players of economies so, 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 so quick, I think you can, you can start by, by, by offering people, small entrepreneurs, local entrepreneurs, local farmers, possibilities of creating like a, an economy that is within the region in which they live, you know, and uh, and uh, and see the young people so 
to 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 see their jobs or or their future like uh, working more in this in these local chains no local value chains i i think it's uh what i feel is this, that there are multiple layers that have to be activated no and uh, one is 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 also helping people to see local possibilities no like we have this trail the Caminho do Reconcavo da Guanabara. And what we are doing with very little money, you know, because of course infrastructure and all this is, is very expensive and you need to convince many other players and uh, most of these things take a lot of time, but, uh, but uh, improve a, a permanent sea where they can put uh, their, their, their work and uh, the efforts in improving things that are there, you know, that already exist. And I think it's, um, we, we are, for example, now improving this, this, this local, like uh, community-based tourism, like setting, like campings, like small restaurants, and, and just in this, in this, and doing this, 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 this group work, you know, in which we, we, we unite volunteers to do things which uh, the construction is more, is more aligned with the environment, is more like a bioconstruction. And just on that, you see, you see already that source of uh, of joy and happiness of working together of uh, of contributing to something that you you see the sense because it's part of where you live no so i think it, you have to just start doing you no know, and and uh, and see how the other forces are going to align in that direction you no know? it's multiple dimensions yeah and i, I love that. yeah i i love the the combination of the two answers, because I, like in the previous one, I think we need both, right? We, we need a, a, a clear articulation um, of what it is and understand it and then create that visibility and make people feel what it is and see what it is. And at the same time, create and convince people that there is actually an opportunity to do that, to start experimenting and to start mm -hmm. learning and to start developing that. So. I mean, on, on that note, um, it just to, to, to kind of turn up the contrast on what we were actually saying earlier, which is um, that everything will be spa sp place and con context specific. And mm -hmm. what I look, I when I look at different projects in different regional contexts. It so depends on whether they're in the global north and the global south. It so depends on the level of wealth in that region. Um, in my extremely affluent um, context of islands that are gentrifying at, at lightning speed at the moment with everybody bringing capital in to, to live on the Balearic Islands, um, there is now such a strong regulation context, like even in most of Northern Europe, like there are no sandboxes left. Like when I heard you say, well, get the community together to experiment with more green building. Wonderful. We've tried that many times. It worked in the 1970s, but since the 1990s, um, it doesn't work anymore because there's so many building regulations that that you get sued if you <laughs> if you build structures that don't have planning permission and all of those kind of things. So, so it, it's which doesn't mean that there aren't people still working on this, but it becomes a really slow and tedious process because the 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 system that is built to defend against like horrendous infringement of building codes is impeding innovation in the eco and and sustainable and regenerative innovation space um, in in these northern uh, countries like or here in Europe. Mm. And the the other thing I wanted to add is the um, when we look at a regional bioeconomy, we have to look at the true value basis of such a living systems economy, and that is the quality of the soil and the health of the local hydrological cycle, and it brings us into so many other things that are, when we talk bioeconomy, often forgotten. <laughs> um, yeah. If we if we focus too much 
on just the economy and its players. But to make this really bioregionally regenerative, the place to start is how would all these activities regenerate the local hydrological cycle, stabilize through that the local microclimates and all of that, ensure the water cycle and clean water access, support, like stop the degradation of soils and improve the, 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 the soil quality, stop deforestation and increase um, forest cover. All these activities should be, like when you said earlier, maybe what's needed is to define very well what we mean by, by economy. Defining very clearly in a regional context what a functional bioeconomy would have to do first, and then a set of values that are in indirectly also in the frame of a value creating the no-nos. Mm -hmm. Like you can then like to think about how do we frame a value that will, if somebody comes along and says, oh yeah, Syngenta, we have lots of really interesting patents that we could um, supply your bioeconomy with and um, whatever, um, introduce rats genes into your tomatoes so they grow faster. Um, there's a very clear value-based statement around the bioeconomy concept that says, no, sorry, that doesn't align with that value. Um, otherwise, it cr creates another container freefall where, where people say, yeah, yeah, we're for the bioeconomy and just go on with their, what they want to do anyway. Uh, yeah, I love that. I love that. The, the, the value, bringing in that value set filter, maybe, um, on that on that articulation, and then bringing like as Thais mentioned, as you have those those things clear, start from the ground up um, um, to show people the value and the joy that it can bring. Uh, you know, so so it feels like like very complementary um, very complementary elements. Um, so so maybe moving to the last question for now, and and um, would be which would be this concept of that that we have, and we're not the only ones talking about this, but this egocentric versus ecocentric leadership, um, which is, I guess, more of a of a um, um, yeah a, a, a terminology to describe. Um, maybe we're too much. Let's say of the old, we would say is is very much egocentric leadership, and where we need to get to is eco leadership. So how do we move again, people? To become more ecocentric, and to what extent, you know, do you believe that's possible to do? Thais, nice. Thais, you want to start? Well, I mean, it's um, I think is 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 the joy of collaboration, no? Because I think uh, I see um, people of uh, people of my age and. Uh, and uh, and even young people you know that uh, that somehow led their lives uh, to leadership uh, there is always uh, that burden you know, of having to be like so many things at the same time to fulfill so many roles you no know? and i think uh, the ecocentric leadership to put it very simple you no know, it by by definition is collective you no know? i mean you have to collaborate with others to make uh, to to sustain something that is much bigger than you, you no know? it's uh, that's some something that you all care about to, to together so i think it's a uh, it's a uh, is a different as as daniel said at the beginning it's a very different uh, concept uh, of the leadership uh, that you know right now no which is agents you do you are the hero which is very very much uh, based on the archetype of the hero or the heroine, you know. And uh, in the ecocentric leadership, uh, they, there are no heroes. Everybody's a hero because, uh, I mean, the big hero is the, the ecosystem, you no? Know, because it's what is holding all of us together, you no? Know? So I think it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's really, uh, it uh, it goes together with what we said at the beginning that is this shift of uh, of uh, 
of um, of being of the connection no? of what nature is about of of that this attraction that is 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 is, is fueled by love no by this by this this energy this this frequency that attract us no and and i think when you when you when you somehow are, uh, are an enabler of this process for for people there is a lot of um, surprises no we may call emergence i don't know but uh, there is a magic i prefer to use the word ma the word magic no there is a magic that happens because it's not about uh, you the other is about uh, not only us together but also that ecosystem informing us where to go you know because this is what i see all the time i mean it's uh, it's not a um, many times I have no idea, no? and we enter there and we start to look at it and uh, look at it together. Immediately we have like an entry point, and from there, from there something flows into the next. You know, so for me it's a totally different. Uh, it's it's a different way of uh, of of seeing things, but it's also much more like a supporting for mm. us as individuals. More, being part of something much, much larger than what we are, no? And it has this, this aspect of mystery, of uh, magic, which is which is so fulfilling, no? Because it's this transcendence uh, that uh, that we cannot uh, um, we cannot uh, uh, disconnect. I mean, disconnected from our lives because we are that, you know. We are that transcendence, that mystery, that uh, magic. And so the ecocentric leadership health signed of is a path for magic. <laughs> That's what I feel. Nice, nice way of articulating. And Daniel, how do you look at the mm -hmm. question? I mean, you could reframe the question to say, how do we make people really reconnect? with the true nature of their being and of what being yeah. in and out of relationship is actually like because the the kind of potential trap of the framing of ecocentric leadership is that even like the Otto Shama from me to we um, framing is a framing within the western worldview of separation when you when we move back into the new and ancient worldview of kin centricity, of understanding that we've ha we have never been anything but members in the community of life, fundamentally dependent on that community, then the whole framing of what is ecocentric changes um, because it's like the danger of that framing from from me to we or from ego to eco is that it could lead people that haven't fully embodied and understood and lived, reconnected with their capacity to understand themselves as living, breathing expressions of a living, breathing planet and not separate from it. Mm -hmm. They could understand this framing as um, I need to be selfless and serve the whole. And the only way that you can serve the whole is to be healthy in serving yourself so you can create your capacity to serve the whole in the in the long term. Mm -hmm. So it's not an this like I've, I, because what what this framing creates is burnt out activists mm -hmm. because people deny their own needs in serving the larger collective, the eco, so long that they then can't do it all their lives because they've burned out. And so, the for me, the circling the square here is is to see that rather than it's from ego to eco is that both have to be in service to life mm. that larger context and and when that worldview shift happens that enables people to really participate as life again which is what what Thais is speaking to like how do we bring people into contexts where they can slow down and feel that reciprocity that is fundamental and natural to the way we actually are um, in relationship to the modern human world. Um, but yeah, there, there's a danger 
I think in again in the framing of of the um, we need ecocentric leadership. Um, although I'm completely aligned with the thinking behind it and why you use it. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's very it's great that that challenge I think helps to to clarify and and make the conversation richer. So I love I love absolutely love that challenge. I, I, I just hold on. I just remembered something that I don't want to forget, which which would briefly pick up on the um because Thais made the reference to the hero's journey, and I think that's another real important thing. We need a different and an alternative to this hero journey leadership story, and I I believe that the the pilgrim rather than the hero is a much wiser more life-centric way of framing that because what what you do as a pilgrim is you you walk with humility and every step is in recognition of the place you're stepping on it's you're, you're not a tourist you're, you're a pilgrim and um through that it changes again into that relationship of being a continuous learner rather than um, coming in with a hero that has an idea of how to change things and then meets the odds and changes things. It's, it's, it's much more feminine and subtle and listening to, to be a, a pilgrim. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah it's a nice, uh, nice framing indeed. And, and, and I, again, I, I love the, the, the previous point as well in terms of it's, it's, we shouldn't position it as oh, from ego to ego-centric. Um, because again, that is that is a polarizing, and B might not recognize the fact that yeah, you have to also make sure that you build your own capacity, and for that you have to make choices that are good for you, right? So I I definitely definitely love that that reframing. Um, and to, and there's a there's a historical precedence to this, which is I, I just put it in the in the chat. Um, the Vedanta or um, like Indian notion of um, seva is precisely the potential of the activating and the restraining force of ego and eco. Like if you think of it in a regenerative um, activating restraining force, what's the potential? Then the ego is always the activating force and the e eco, the collective, is the wise context-specific restraining force. Mm -hmm. And they both need it, but it is in service to life that their role become to meet the higher potential. Um, so yeah. I, I find it always really helpful when we can point at indigenous cultural wisdom like encoded in the Vendanta and say, this is the state of being that made us survive for centuries. This is not something new. This is something ancient that we've forgotten in a few centuries of unbridled industrial growth society. Yeah, exactly. So it's really, I like also the framing of it's more about a state of being, right? Um, and that could be one to, to further explore um, in terms of you know, what is that state of being that we would like as many as possible people uh, to get into, right? To help, to help in this uh, journey. Be before we close, is there any Thing that that either of you want to add or or ask each other <laughs> to to conclude the, the 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 conversation. Well, I think it was a very rich conversation. I really want to thank you, Danielle. I think you, you bring uh, things to a level of. Um, of uh, of understanding of uh, contextualization, which is which is which is very, I would say, opening, no, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and helps the consistency uh, and clarity of what we're, everything that we are doing, and um, and I think uh, just to finish, no, because I feel that it's important for the ones that are going to 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 maybe watch this interview and listen to it. Uh, I think it's it's important to make it, uh, I, I like the pilgrim and uh, and also that there are many entry points, no, to, to go to your last question, Dick. I think that uh, the entry points are, 
uh, like in Buddhism, they say that uh, 84,000 ways to get enlightened. So I think it's not a necessary through a bioregion, it's not, a, but, it, but I think it's about sensing something that is really feels real to you. No, I think uh, an important point, uh, especially right now, in which we have been so blindated with, uh, with all the technology to, to, to be stimulated in so many ways, I think it's is to 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 invite everyone to really to really make uh, the space in life uh, for things that uh, that you at least suspect uh, that will feel will make you feel feel real because at the end is about that you know we are part of this incredible uh, uh, incredible phenomena which is life you know and. Uh, that's what we cannot disconnect it off because once you do that, I mean, you kind of uh, are, are, are just uh, moving through life uh, as, as a machine, as something that, uh, that doesn't have this, doesn't uh, really ex exercise this incredible capacities we have in functions, life functions that we embody, you know, we all embody a lot of life functions. And so I think uh, that's what I would la like to leave, uh, not to say that everybody has to go to a bioregion or to be part of a bio hub or to be like uh, outside. And then little by little, you are going to see which is the path uh, that will be will make sense to you, you know, to, to expand your life capacities, the life capacities that we embody, each one of us embody. Yes, lovely. And what's to define your pilgrim's journey, right? To connect it to yeah, the, exactly, exactly. The framed it. That's lovely. Towards, towards, towards full life. Let's put full life participation. Yes, Daniel. Yeah, I mean, it's very much aligned with what just Pace just said. This. Um, we can get lost in strategizing of how to solve this, but really. If we pay attention to how life as a regenerative force that works in every cell of our body, in every organ, and in, in ourselves, in our communities, and in our ecosystems everywhere right now, if we actually pay attention to that rather than to the story that we're trapped in, the industrial growth society that, that, that has enshrined us in even the way we think about ourselves and relate to this mystique the magic of participation as life in life then we really can reconnect to the fact that all around us there are people caring sharing loving healing restoring protecting and if we bring them all together and say this is us in this bioregional context you can't actually go to a bioregion because you're always in one <laughs> <laughs> um, you might not be conscious of it, but but it's not a choice. In the same way, you can't but change the world. You always do with every single act of thinking, saying, and being in the world. And reminding people of that and doing it together in a humble way in the context of our local communities, reconnecting to each other and, and being so conscious collectively in this how do we do the unlearning because even if we say oh yeah we need to go to nature and connect to nature and have this wonderful oasis where we yes that's where we can open up and have magical experiences but nature is everywhere it's right in the middle of sao paulo it if it otherwise like goethe said if you don't see nature everywhere um you see her nowhere in the right light and there's deep wisdom to that. So how, how do we, in the most desolate places, reconnect to the fact that life is still active there? Because we're there, like somebody is there. And how do we support in those places these impulses of loving, caring, sharing, protecting, nurturing? And I think then we can see that regeneration is not some kind of future utopia. It's a central process of life itself that we have the capacity to support 
we can be gardeners of abundance again. And um, if we choose the other path, we won't live very long as a species. <laughs> yes, it's a great, uh, great reason, simple reason to uh, to choose that that first path and first suggestion. Thank you so much, both of you, and of course, special thank you, Daniel, for making the time for this interview. But it's uh, yes, you've been wonderful and very insightful, and and thanks thanks a lot for that. So, uh, just briefly, like, uh, did you want to keep this? separate for this process or shall we just share this or like what because, because if you're only going to take yeah. little bits out of it maybe at some point once you've used it we can also just put it somewhere to have because it's a it's, it's been a nice yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely i'll pause the recording and then we can we can have that conversation for sure yeah. um yeah. let's say